Before sunrise, every alarm on a US carrier lit at once. Then the screen went dark. 18 seconds of blindness against a sky full of missiles and drones. How do you fight when you can't see? Stay. This is how Truman won. This is the story of a ship built for wars of yesterday and tomorrow. The USS Harry S. Truman. And how her crew faced a multi-vector strike designed to blind first and break later. What happened next wasn't just defense. It was a masterclass in modern warfare. Firepower, silence, and precision. The opening move came fast. Tracks bloomed across radar like a sudden storm. High arcs from inland. Low signatures skimming the waves and a haze of electronic clutter that tried to turn the ocean itself into a mirage. Some threats were meant to kill. Others were meant to confuse. Drones carrying jammers, spoofers, and bad data poured into the spectrum, trying to make men and machines doubt what they saw. For a breath, 18 heartbeats, maybe fewer, the picture went muddy. Then training took over. Electronic warfare tech started carving the noise, slicing away the fake returns. On the escorts, destroyers built for this exact kind of knife fight. Aegis screens locked in, target lists updated, priorities shifted, and the first counterpunch rose from the decks. From miles out, interceptors clawed into the dark. SM-6 and SM-2 missiles leapt skyward in rippled volleys, drawing straight white scars through the night. Weapon away, splash. Debris became falling constellations. But not every threat comes from above. Low and fast, sea-skimming intruders press the edges, looking for the blind corners of radar and horizon. Closer now. The carrier's own air defense layer woke up. Evolved Sea Sparrow missiles punched out, found the twitching signatures of agile drones, and cut them down in the final miles. And when anything got past that, when something rode the wave tops and dared the last ring, the close-in guns answered with the sound every sailor knows, a rising electric whine that becomes a wall of tungsten. Seawez track, Seawez engage, and then, silence, smoke, and wreckage boiling the water off the starboard beam. Below decks, it looked like chaos, but felt like choreography. Orders were short, flat, unemotional. Hands moved without wasted motion. Monitors updated. Fire parties stood ready and waited, and kept waiting, because nothing on board was burning. The ship shook once from a near-water burst, a hard slap to the hull that made coffee jump in cups. No breach. No flight deck crater. No surrender. Up top, the air picture widened. Mission update. If this story matters to you, power it forward. We're pushing to 100,000. Hit subscribe, tap the bell, and drop a like. Tell us where you're watching from. Comment your country below. Enjoy the rest of the video. Back to the mission in 3, 2, 1. An E-2D Hawkeye lifted, its radar sweeping a clean 360E, stitching the battle space back together. EA-18G growlers slid onto the right frequencies and flipped the script. The jammers who came to blind were now the ones flying in the dark. Links dropped. Loiterers spiraled. Invisible weapons doing visible work. From the first alarm to the last splash, the strike group moved like a single organism. Destroyers formed the outer ring. The carrier kept her nerve at the core. The goal was simple. Keep steel and people safe. Keep the air wing flying. Keep the enemy guessing. Layer by layer, the attack unraveled. And then, the part you don't see in recruitment videos. The quiet after. The tight-lipped, heart still hammering, quiet. Everyone knew what that quiet meant. This would not go unanswered. In the Combat Information Center, the mood shifted from reactive to deliberate. Intelligence painted the routes backward. Heat trails and launch geometries arcing toward mountain shelves and coastal hide sites. Some platforms were mobile, some felt hardened. None were invisible anymore. Orders moved faster than the sea. Aircraft crews prepped with the calm of people who've trained this a thousand times. Ordnance teams loaded, checked, and checked again. Pilots traced lines on screens, then in the sky. The response would be twofold. Visible steel and invisible pressure. The steel you know. Precision strikes on nodes that made the attack possible. Sensors, launchers, storage, command links. The invisible part was the revelation. 
On the escorts, electronic warfare suites pushed back hard. Cutting data links, bending GPS, turning hostile UAVs into drift. No smoke, no flash, just drones losing purpose and falling out of the story. Victory by Eraser Coalition partners widened the net. Allied ships extended radar coverage, shared tracks and closed the seams where low flyers try to sneak. The picture smoothed out until the gaps disappeared. For a while, the map was clean. No new launches, no new spikes. The lesson? Tomorrow's naval fights won't be won by steel alone. They'll be won by steel plus signals, algorithms and timing, patience and pressure. But let's be honest. If a force fighting from hillsides and trucks can choreograph a strike this complex, what happens when the next opponent is faster, richer, or backed by a state with near-peer tools? If this story matters to you, power it forward. We're pushing to 100,000. Hit subscribe, tap the bell, and drop a like. Tell us where you're watching from. Comment your country below. Enjoy the rest of the video. Back to the mission in 3, 2, 1. That's the real question that echoed through command halls in the days after. Upgrades accelerated. Radar filters got smarter. Target deconfliction got tighter. Directed energy layers moved higher on the priority list. Because the battlefield is evolving and carriers, symbols, airports, and cities at sea have to evolve with it. There were bruises along the way. A hard turn at the wrong moment cost a fighter jet to the sea during evasive maneuvers. A reminder that even when the enemy never touches you, the ocean and the mission can. The air wing kept flying. The ship kept station. The message stayed the same. We're here. We're ready. And we adapt. If you strip away the acronyms and the headlines, this comes down to people. A radar operator who doesn't blink when the screen blooms red. A SeaWiz gunner who waits that extra half second for a clean shot. A growler crew who can make the air feel like concrete to an enemy sensor. Doctrine matters. Training matters. Teamwork wins. In less than two days, launch cells went quiet on the coast. Warehouses meant for drones went dark. Signals that once buzzed like hornets disappeared into static. Not because of a single missile, but because of a thousand decisions made in sequence, under pressure, by crews who trust each other. So, what's the truth behind all the drama? It's this. You don't threaten a US carrier and walk away without paying. But power isn't only about how loud you answer. It's about how smart. It's about holding the line in public while changing the geometry of the fight in the shadows. It's about reminding every watcher, from capitals to caves, that deterrence is a web, not a single punch. In an age of drone swarms and contested spectra, the Truman Strike Group showed the playbook for what comes next. Layers, loops, and discipline. Sensors to shooters in seconds. Kinetic and non-kinetic married at the hip. Allies closing the seams. And always, always, people who refuse to blink. If you believe these stories matter, the honest, unflinching look at how wars are changing and how sailors keep the sea open, hit subscribe, drop a like, and share this with someone who still thinks a carrier fight is just jets and bombs. The future of war is louder and quieter than you think, and it's already here.